Welcome to Project Pack number nine. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And today I am doing my tile on a gray tile. There were some white and gray and tan tiles in the Project Pack. And since my way of doing flux is so different from Martha's or Maria's, I thought I would just show you how I uh, approach it. And mine are more like these uh, leaves that come out. And mine go in all sorts of different ways. Like they might start from the same place or they might, like in this case, they'll go off the top. Uh, different directions. Sometimes I'll loop back on myself. Uh, I'm, if I have anything in the back of my mind other than just like what's happening at the moment, it's, uh, well, how can I create some spaces that uh, I can add some circles to? And, and you'll see that uh, afterwards here. So I just uh, put these leaves in and then I'll go back in and find the largest space, or I find a space and put in the largest circle possible. And once I have those done, I'll go back, depending on how fine I want to draw, and find some smaller spaces, and again, put in as large a circle as, as will fit. And then I go and fill up all of the uh, interstices with uh, the dark pen. So here I am using the dark green pen and uh, just filling up all those spaces. And that's, that's my approach to, uh, to the basic structure of flux. And when I first started doing flux, I was remembering it, it looked like the leaf of purslane, which is an herb that uh, I used to grow when I had a garden. So I would go back in and uh, just put this center line down and maybe I'll put a dot or, or not. But if you notice on this pen, we'll do a little close up here. I'm taking advantage of the, this pen that you can push really hard. So I'm just barely touching when I begin, but then I push, see how it gets thicker? So you can uh, really take advantage in, of, of the uh, resilience or the strength of that nib and, and push on it pretty heavy. And then I might put a couple dots on. So Maria had done a, a sample and was playing around. I said, well, oh, that looks just like malachite. And I had a couple slabs of malachite. And you can see that light and dark uh, shifting there. And it's, it's all aura ink, right? Here's another piece I found, all right? Look at that. It's like nature tangles. It's so inspirational, I mean. So anyways, I figured I'm gonna make a formula. So I'll look at this and I'll say, okay, light, light, dark, light, dark, dark, light, thick, you know? And, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just repeat this over and over and, and see what happens, so. You know, I made made my little formula there, and it's just you can see how simple this this tangle actually was. It looked complicated, but his first stroke down was this simple aura of the tangle um, flux. So this is going to dictate the whole rest of the tangle. Right. So this is like it's like resonating. So you think of it like, oh, you know, like, oh, maybe you, you, you throw a pebble in a pond, and once it's thrown, it's gone. And then it, it just, like, however it hits, wherever it hits, that's where the uh, auras uh, resonate out from. And then you just watch it. And in this case, the, uh, the pebble is this amazing shape, like Maria said, created by the, uh, the flux. So every time you draw another aura, it takes on, uh, it, it's always a little bit different. So I'm following my formula very, you know, precisely. <laughs> that's what checking. rookies do, that's yeah. That's what I do, you know, it's like, <laughs> and sometimes I, it, you know, it's, it's neat to have, have that 
elegance of limits, you know, and, and just see where it takes you. But, uh, but you also see that I completely yeah, rules dumped are it. <laughs> rule, rules are meant to be broken, right? And, and so I promptly break my own guidelines here because I realized uh, I want to do it a little different. It's on the fly. On the fly. And, and, and you know, that is... Uh, now that I think of it, it's a really nice uh, little lesson or, or suggestion is that even when you say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, uh, you get partway there and you say, yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but let's, let's go in this other direction. And that's where, you know, trusting, the, uh, trusting what's coming from your own uh, you know, imagination and creativity and just learning to uh, follow those signals and, and say, ah, I think I'm, I feel like doing this. I, so this I, is I've this, a really pretty tangle. Right? And it's, it's basic, simple aura. But what's so amazing is the, the symmetry and how it matches that malachite, e even to the color, the light and dark green. I think that's probably what had uh, made you think of it at, yeah, in yeah. the beginning, and then you realize how how much it was exactly that. Yeah, I went running, and, and I said, "Oh, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to say what I was grateful for." And when I was studying with Hollis Little Creek, the uh, Anishinaabe elder that taught me flute and a bunch of other stuff, he would always start grateful at meals for th giving thanks first of all for the air we breathe. And uh, when you think of it, uh, you can go maybe, what, a couple minutes without it? <laughs> so it should be the first thing so we're it's, grateful it's for. Really yeah. the, it's a very basic thing, and, and I think it's, at least for me, it's easy to forget those things that are so important. So you can see he's going off in a different direction here. Um, he saw an opportunity in that corner there to, to make these auras stop going in another direction and uh, and then just ignored it. <laughs> it like... Right? So there's this, like this little layering of uh, how the, you know, you can always change and, uh, you know, it was getting to be a little, it, it just said, oh, that's what belongs there. And so I guess there it is. But it was totally unplanned. So the way I uh, shade flux is I will layer down a uh, a whole like clump of graphite at oh, the narrow a, edge. That is a dark clump, right? Yeah. And then just guide it up a little bit towards the top. You want to leave leave some of it obviously unshaded, but then I'll use the graphite that that heaviness picked up and, and just add it to the orbs. Gives them a pearlescent look. I mean. Yeah, maybe the tip a little bit. A little smiley face, just a little bit away from the edge. And then for doing the, the perk, same thing on the edge, so it looks like, oh, they're nestled in that uh, little opening and it just sort of opened up like you'd, you know, open up some snap peas and see them inside. And at first I thought, oh, I'll have enough graphite on my, uh, my tortillon to, to do that. And I played around with that a little bit and I said, ah, oh, there's not enough contrast. So I went back in with the pencil, laid a little graphite down. That's the beauty of the, one of the beauties of the pencil. You can always you can always add more. So those those pop up a little better now, right? It's nice and soft on the gray tile. The the, the contrast. Yeah. So now here comes the malachite. This is going to be the fun, the fun part of shading. Yeah. So this is going to lift that flux right up off. Beautiful. So now I'm going to uh, go back in with the graphite here. And 
you can see he's going where those little uh, divots for the, you can see like a, a, a sort of a line there, but it's not a line. It's just a, a curvature of the right. line. That's my favorite part right there, that little tuck in thing. So Almost like that, a mushroom. Right? right? That little over and under, just to sort of take advantage of that and, and emphasize that. And again, we're just putting down enough graphite here to, uh, you know, to use when we come back with our tortillon, right? And just to smooth that out. So now I'm, I'm taking advantage of the gray to come back on top with the uh, white charcoal here, the general's white charcoal. And just uh, add that. A lot of times I just use the pencil or the charcoal itself as a tortillon uh, and blend that in with the... With the uh, graphite. Right. Nice little pearls there. A mm -hmm. little bit on the tip of the uh, leaves. And then I'm going to go over those uh, in the center just so give that sense of oh they're like rounded and uh, it's catching a little highlight there. And you can be pretty heavy-handed with the uh, charcoal. So I think uh, a little bit more. So there's another example. It's sort of like a very natural tile, you know, a little bit of plant, a little bit of rock, mineral. <laughs> So thanks, everybody, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. See you later. Bye. Bye now.